Hi, and welcome to our video of 1.1, Atomic Theory, Early Discoveries. Uh, first person we're going to talk about was this uh, ancient Greek philosopher called Democritus, who lived about uh, 500 BC. And he said that matter can be divided into small particles, atomos, and that actually was Greek for indivisible something that cannot be divided. And what he hypothesized was that the atoms could not be cut up. Well, from there, not a whole lot happened for a very long time uh, until this guy Dalton, in 1803, came up with a bunch of ideas. And Dalton is basically considered the father of atomic theory. And he said the following, and these are things that you have to memorize. You need to know these, okay? One, all matter is composed of individual particles called atoms. He said that all atoms of a given element are identical in mass and properties. So all hydrogen atoms, identical in mass and properties. All oxygen atoms, identical in mass and properties, etc. He said that Compounds are formed by a combination of two or more atoms. And finally, he said, atoms cannot be created, destroyed, or converted into other kinds of atoms during chemical reactions. Okay, so all of these are things we're going to have to know. All right, so a number of years later, this guy J.J. Thompson came up with some more ideas. And the thing he's mainly known for is discovering electrons using the cathode ray tube. Now, let's take a look at this. A cathode ray tube is the forerunner of the television tube. It is a glass tube from which most of the air has been evacuated. When the two metal plates are connected to a high voltage source, the negatively charged plate, called the cathode, emits an invisible ray. The cathode ray is drawn to the positively charged plate, called the anode, where it passes through a hole and continues traveling to the other end of the tube. When the ray strikes this specially coated surface, the cathode ray produces a strong fluorescence, or bright light. When an electric field is applied across the cathode ray tube, the cathode ray is attracted by the plate-bearing positive charges. Therefore, a cathode ray must consist of negatively charged particles. We know these negatively charged particles as electrons. A moving charge body behaves like a tiny magnet, and it can interact with an external magnetic field. The electrons are deflected by the magnetic field. As expected, when the direction of the external magnetic field is reversed, the beam of electrons is deflected in the opposite direction. In 1897, J.J. Thomson, an English physicist, determined the charge-to-mass ratio of an electron. He adjusted the electric field so that the electrostatic deflection, theta E, was the same as the magnetic deflection, theta B, and was able to calculate the charge-to-mass ratio of an electron using the following equation where E is the applied electric field, theta is the angle of deflection, B is the applied magnetic field, and L is the distance traveled by the cathode rays. Thompson determined the charge to mass ratio of an electron to be negative 1.76 times 10 to the 8th coulombs per gram. All right, that, that all seems really complicated, but don't worry, we're going to go over the important parts that we need to know. Here they are. All right, so the cathode ray deflected by negative electrode towards the positive electrode. So he was shooting the cathode ray, right? Here's the negative electrode. Here's the positive electrode. And the ray was deflected towards the positive. Why is that? Well, opposites attract and likes repel. So if something was attracted towards the positive, it must be negative. So he demonstrated that the electron is negatively charged. All right. So the electron is one of the subatomic particles, along with protons, 
and neutrons. Okay. The electron is very small and it's negatively charged. All right, so these are the three main things about Thomson we need to know. Now the other thing from Thomson that we need to know is what's called the plum pudding model, one of the earlier models of the atom. It's not one that's in use today, but unfortunately we still need to know. So basically what he's saying is that the atom as a whole, there's a positive, what he calls a pudding. Okay, so the main part of the atom is positive, and it has these negatively charged electrons, kind of like plums in a British plum pudding. All right, a number of years later, this guy Millikan found the mass and charge of the electron. All right, question time. A couple of easy multiple choice questions just based on the information that you were just given. So answer these and we'll talk about them in class. And that brings us to the end, and I will see you guys in school.